Hello. I'd like you to well, I'd like to welcome you to a a an AutoCAD course that I recently ran for our estates and buildings department, and uh, the remit for this was to to generate a course that was for people who use AutoCAD infrequently, and they're basically dealing with drawings that have been created by others. So this would be suppliers or installers or whatever and they have to maybe annotate some drawings add add small items to the drawings take measurements measure areas or just reproduce the drawing in a different format so maybe you know printing it onto a different paper taking extracts whatever so it's not an actual full drawing course it's more the kind of logistics around working with drawings the folder that I've got open on screen here is the uh, the contents of the zip file that you'll find alongside the, uh, the the description of the video. Okay, in the folder there's a number of files. Three of these are AutoCAD drawings. One is an AutoCAD pen settings file, and this is how AutoCAD controls the line weight and color that you end up with on paper when you print something. And the last file there is a small text file, which we'll use later on when we add some text to the drawing. I'm going to show you how you annotate a drawing. Okay, this is the, the kind of standard view you would see in Windows. And uh, with, with, a, with a fresh install of Windows, it's basically the same for everybody. We can't see the end names of the files. And it's the, the suffix of the file, the end part of the name, that is extremely useful, especially to somebody using AutoCAD because we can track down our temporary files, we can rename the end portions of the files and resurrect our work from what seems like a, a desperate situation when a computer crashes. So it's very important that we can see the end name, end parts of the files. Some icons like this are very small and difficult to read and could be confused with other types of files. So to change the, uh, the, the way your folders look and see the end parts of the files, we use this small button here in any open folder. This will activate it for the whole of your computer. So you drop the list, drop the arrow down here, and you'll see folder and search options. And then go for the middle tab, which is called view. And there's only two things you need to change. We want to show hidden files, folders, and drives. And I don't want to hide extensions for known file types. Then click apply and OK and we should see the suffixes of the of the file names. Okay so we've got dot ctbs, dot dwgs and a dot txt there as well. Okay now I want to launch the software uh, so we're working with AutoCAD 2013 but everything in this little course uh, is applicable to all previous versions. Okay, I've got my desktop icon here, which I could use to launch the software. I could double click a GWG and that will open the software as well. Or going through the start button, the usual route to find your installed programs. I, I tend to prefer the desktop icon. Uh, sometimes you do get a little hiccup with trying to launch from a file. Uh, the desktop icon is usually the, the more certain method. So we double click this. Okay, AutoCAD has been on recently, so it launched pretty quickly there. Right, well, let's uh, let's have a look at another folder as we start working. Okay, now as well as the folder that's got the course in it, I've I've also oh, as I've also opened here a folder that's on my drive D, and this is where I've got AutoCAD pointed to to save any temporary work and you'll see that a file has just been created undo.ac$ okay so as we work this file will grow and grow and grow okay zero kilobytes at the moment but after we've done some work we will nip back to this folder and we'll see how things are changing in here so I've cleared all the other rubbish out uh, just so we can see the folders the files arrive as we work right let's open the file you can do that through the open icon you could use the red letter A and get the open command and then drawing. 
or you could type in the open command in the command prompt. Now the command prompt usually when you when you first run the software will be sitting in this kind of position. Okay, it just sits at the bottom of the screen. And that's not a very useful place for a command prompt. So what I'd ask, I'd request you to do is is pick up the command prompt through this little 10 dot graphic at the end. You click and hold. And when I say click, I mean left mouse button. Okay, you click and hold. Move your cursor down and you'll see the object change shape. Okay, once it goes to the long wide rectangle, you can let go and that parks the command prompt at the bottom. I would give yourself at least three lines here, three or four, as you can see there, and this allows you to see what happens with settings because this is where the information area is much easier to read if it's parked down here. But anyway, we are opening a file. So I'm going to use the open icon at the top here. Okay, it's going directly to the folder I'm working and wanting to work to, which is handy. And we're going to open this level six plan. Okay, so this is a plan of a building that exists already, and we're just going to use it as a base for doing various things. Okay, so you can either double click the file there, or you can click it once and then open. Okay, now let's have a look at the uh, back at our folders and see what's changed. Let's have a look in the AutoCAD first, AutoCAD course one first. Two more files have appeared, both ending with DWL, and this one's got DWL2. Now these are identifiers that tell other computer users that are on my network, perhaps, who's got the file open. So it's an identifier. Some people say it's a lock. It is in a way, because it warns the other person that the file is opened by somebody else, and they can only open it as read-only but it isn't really locking the file up in any way. It's just an identifier. Okay, I don't think anything else will have appeared in CAD Recover yet. No change there, but we'll keep coming back to that as we do things. Okay, so now what, how, how come my AutoCAD is pointing to drive D? Now, this is, this is set in your options area of the software. It's like preferences or or options that you would find in Microsoft Word for instance. Now this is a useful thing to change so instead of it pointing to a quite a tricky location on the computer which would be something like C colon backslash users backslash roaming backslash local backslash temp backslash autodesk you know a pretty horrific path you can actually point it to somewhere that's a bit easier to get to. So I have my machine pointing to drive D and into a folder called CAD Recover. So I know that I should find any debris from my work in that in that area. So let's show you how you how you change that. So drop the red letter A down. At the bottom of the dialog, you'll see options. Okay. Now we're looking for I think it's the tenth one down. So we're on the Files tab. Tenth one down, you've got automatic save file location. You click the plus sign, you click on the path, and if you want to change it, you click browse. Okay, now we do the same for one a bit further down. Temporary drawing file location. So both of these can be the same location. Okay, now the automatic save file location uh, and the temporary drawing file location may as well be the same. Uh, it's just so everything goes into the same place. So my undos and redos, and more importantly, the one the files that are generated as I'm working, they're the ones I want to go there. So they're the they're the automatic save files. Uh, AutoCAD generates these every 10 minutes by default. You can make that quicker, you can make it save every five minutes, but you may find that that gets a bit annoying. Older versions of AutoCAD were set to 120 minutes between auto saves, which was a crazy setting to have it sitting on normally. That's much too much work to lose. And uh, you know, I did lose lots of work because of that, forgetting to reset the, uh, the auto save 
setting. And if you want to do that, just show you while I'm here, if you go to the Open and Save tab, you can set your safety uh, automatic saves to be however many minutes you want in this position here. So the default is 10. OK, so we, did, we didn't make any changes, but I may as well click Apply and OK. So everything should go to the same place now. And after about 10 minutes, you may notice a little line appearing here saying it's doing an auto save to d colon backslash recover, which is what we want. OK, so we've got the file open. We've told it where to go in case of an emergency. And we'll look back at the CAD recover folder in a while to look for the, the, the important file that I'm talking about. Right, we haven't done anything yet. OK, we have opened a file now, though. And you may have also noticed that in, uh, well, it isn't there yet because we haven't clicked Save. So that's what we're going to do first. Even though we haven't done anything, we're going to click Save. So you can use the floppy disk icon at the top here, or through the red letter A, you've got Save. So I've hit Save. Have a look at the folder, and you see a .bak file has appeared. Now these are both the same same size at the moment, but sometimes you may find that the level six plan lags behind a bit. And to, to update both of them, you should click Save twice, and that will make sure they're both exactly the same. So before you do anything tricky like you know a shading or something tricky like that, you should always click Save just in case. Okay, don't just rely on the auto saves. Okay, now while we're t dealing with files, uh, I'll just explain another few things that you can you can do. Okay, now as a, as you copy and paste between files and you bring things in, uh, the drawing builds very quickly. And even though you might not have much drawn information, the file could be very unwieldy. It could be very large. So what we do regularly is the purge command and this clears away anything that's invisible in the drawing that is not on a layer that's switch just happens to be switched off or frozen and that basically you know if you didn't know it was there then you couldn't really use it you know because you'd be ignorant of its presence and that's what the the commands relying on that you know if it's if it's not there you don't know about it it shouldn't be in the drawing so it can be purged away it can be kind of cleaned out of the drawing and this is one of a number of utilities that you find in the drawing utilities area. You see we have the purge command here. So do this regularly. Keeps your file, files much smaller and they're less likely to crash your computer. Now if you encounter a drawing that is causing you problems, you can get into it but it's something it's somehow a bit unstable. Then you should audit the file. Okay, if you find a file that you can't open, then it maybe needs recovering. Okay, so if you're in a file, you can use audit. If you're not in a file and you can't get into it, then you can try recover. Now, when AutoCAD does have problems, it, and say there's a power cut and that's beyond anybody's control, then auto, when you restart everything, AutoCAD automatically runs the Drawing Recovery Manager. And this is extremely useful now. And, you know, 99 times out of 100, it will recover very well from where you left off and uh, your drawing should be you know, just a few moments behind. OK, you usually don't need to activate this yourself. It's something that automatically pops up when you restart AutoCAD. It, it records that there's been a problem and that Recovery Manager should be launched. So that's basically it for, for the first part of this this little um, exercise. One one tiny last thing is that files can be saved to older formats. The the 2013 file type isn't compatible even with AutoCAD 2012. So you really do have to consider other people and saving to older formats gets around this. So if we wanted to save this into an older format of AutoCAD, use the red letter A, save as, drawing but in this dialog box we have the drop down at the bottom which gives us access to the older formats of AutoCAD and if the person's still struggling to open your file 
then perhaps you should go to a DXF format. But bear in mind, when you do save as a DXF, the, the recipient may not receive what you have set up in your layout. They'll get everything that's in model space, which is the general drawing area, but they may not be able to open the layout information. So DWG is the one to go for first. Okay, we'll stop that just there and pick up again in a few moments.